Hi, this is Justine Lombardi, e-learning team at NERIC, and this is the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines for Blended Learning Teachers. We want to build bridges to our students' learning, not accidentally create barriers. Most of us blended teachers are excited about the potential for technology for improving outcomes for our students, but we need to be concerned with accessibility as we select and create digital curriculum. Mainly for equity reasons, we want all of our students to have access. There may be sleeper disabilities we're not aware of in our classroom, and research shows that following the web content accessibility guidelines improves design for everyone, not just people with disabilities. WCAG is split into four modalities or aspects. The first is perceivable, text and media are easier to see with alternatives provided. The second is operable, multiple modalities for content, expression, and input are provided, and navigation is relatively easy. The third is understandable, content is understandable. And the last is robust. Uh, the, we want to make sure the software we select is compatible with current and future accessibility tools. Because this course focuses on creating content for blended courses, we're going to work on understandable and perceivable today. So let's start with some text considerations. The main goal here is readable and understandable. For contrast, we want to make sure we're using a high contrast font, so dark on light or light on dark. For headings, what we want to do is in Word or Google Docs or our LMS, we want to make sure we're using the headings dropdowns. This creates sometimes nice glossaries and documents, but it also makes it easier for a person utilizing a screen reader to tab through and find what they're looking for. Chunking text into smaller pieces makes readability better for people with reading disabilities and people without reading disabilities. And then finally, we want to take into consideration things like font, size, and emphasis, and I'll go into a little more detail on that in the next slide. We want to be careful about the font size and type we're selecting. I recommend for printed documents going no smaller than 12 points, but that will change relative to what font you, size, you choose because fonts have slightly different point sizes. And for PowerPoints and presentations, I recommend going no smaller than 30 points. For um, body font and then using your 60 or your 17, 72 points for titles. I've shown some examples of font types here. One is a serif font type. So if you look at the Times New Roman, the Latino, the PT Mono, they all have little strokes on the end of their teeth. That's what differentiates the serif font is the little strokes at the end of the letters. Then there's sans serif fonts, which are missing the little strokes. And then finally, there are script style fonts, which are the two examples I have on the bottom. In general, we want to go for simple style fonts and avoid script style fonts. Generally speaking, it's considered good for print materials to use serif fonts and for digital materials to use sans serif fonts. However, I think in general, if you're just utilizing a simple font, you're fine. You also want to avoid using too many fonts as this decreases the readability of the document. So on this slide, I've created some examples, harder to read examples on the right, easier to read examples on the left. And you can see good contrast, good font size, and simple fonts are much easier to read. Next, let's talk about some considerations for images. We wanna keep in mind that people with visual deficits or people who are blind can't see images. For that reason, we wanna add alt text when we're utilizing images in a learning management system like Schoology or even building a Word document. This will let the person who can't see the image well, or not at all, understand what the point of the image is through a screen reader. Complex images like graphs and charts, you don't really want to utilize alt text because alt text should be short and sweet and to the point. So in the main body of your text, what you want to do is explain the point of the chart or graph and why it's there. What point are you trying to make with the chart and graph? So someone who can't see it well can understand why it's there. We also want to make sure that we're only adding meaningful images to our digital content, images that improve the understanding of the content knowledge that we're trying to get across to our students. And finally, decorative images don't require alt text or descriptions because they're purely decorative. So things like borders, frames, etc. Let's take a look at multimedia, audio, video, other considerations. Um, Predictable and easy is important. So if you're using a learning management system, you want to use the same layout unit after unit so your students know where to look for things. 
For video, we want to make sure that we're utilizing captions or providing alternative forms of media to explain the meaning of what we're going for. And that's also true for audio preferences like podcasts. We want to make content that's seizure free. So avoid flashing or dancing or sparkling GIFs or text art. And finally, time, we want to make sure students have enough time to ingest the content we're giving them. Hyperlinks. Often as we create documents or build our courses in a learning management system for students, we'll be linking to other things. What we want to do is avoid those long hyperlinks because when someone's using a screen reader, all they hear is that long hyperlink and it takes a long time to listen to it. You can kind of imagine if you were reliant on a screen reader, you have to hear HTTP, blah, 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 every time you look at a URL to decide if you want to click on it. That's very time consuming. You also want to avoid non-descriptive hyperlinks like the words click here, because if someone's tapping through using a screen reader, they're going to have a hard time knowing what the point of that hyperlink is. And it makes navigation more difficult for people without visual deficits as well, because it's not descriptive. So for hyperlinks, we want to give a descriptive hyperlink. So for example, uh, one of the labs I used in my psychology course, uh, you can see the hyperlinks up here. The correct way to use this is to label it optical illusions lab rather than the direct URL label or a click here label. The last thing I'd like to talk about in this video is the use of color to convey meaning. It's okay to use color to convey meaning, but you wanna combine it with other elements. So it's just not one mode of meaning conveyance. Um, not everyone can perceive color. So a stop sign is actually a great example of how to do this. We've got multiple modes of meaning conveyance here in the shape of the stop sign, the word stop, and the color red. So the color is working in combination with other elements. Thanks for watching and have a great day.